One Piece chapter 1000 left me speechless, gave me chills, and had me just full of so much emotion. I've been following this series for so long. Just to reach the 1000 chapter was an amazing feat. But the fact that this chapter, titled Straw Hat Luffy, brought back so many, many memories. It felt nostalgic in a sense. It made me think of moments like in the beginning, Chapter 2, Alvida, when Luffy pretty much showed his true power against Alvida, which was a devastating Gomu Gomu no pistol. Or when Arlong and that whole situation of like Nami and all that was built up with Arlong, with such an amazing arc in the East Blue. Or going to the Grand Line with Crocodile and that whole situation of Alabasta Kingdom and Vivi. Or, or Bluno when Luffy finally pretty much overcame something that he couldn't overcome it was an amazing feat from water 7 to any's lobby and there's rob lucci that are also such an amazing moment showing the new gears gear third definitely had me shook or nightmare luffy and thriller bark i'm telling you guys pre time skip there were so many amazing moments that this chapter made me think of and looking at post time skips like situations of doflamingo and dress rosa uh multiple moments red hawk and, and, and gear four i'm telling you guys and then of course katakuri in the recent hokey island arc definitely Luffy has always showed out and he's always caused his opponents pain for them causing pain to others. It's pretty much Luffy's justice and his justice has always been solid. I have to admit, Luffy, many people wanted Luffy to have some sort of crazy twist with the Willa D or some crazy reveal in general, rocks. But I'll be honest here, this chapter was not about the future. We've had so many chapters in One Piece. In the thousand chapters of One Piece, we've had so much chapters that have twists, that have crazy twists, that have crazy situations. Uh, our ankles get broken, theories get start making up. But this chapter wasn't about that. It was about looking back on these 1,000 chapters that we experienced. Now, make sure you guys subscribe and please like this video. Let's try to get 500 likes for this video. Just for chapter 1,000, I'm going to try to get 500 likes for this video. Hey, man, if you guys really want to support chapter 1,000, let's try to get 1,000 likes for this video, guys. Turn on your notification, but let's continue on with this video. And, of course, the first thing I have to talk about, you guys see the title, Luffy's Red Rock. What can I say? I didn't even know about the whole situation of how of Red Rock being kind of like a mythical bird in like some sort of mythology. It just shocked me because of course we know the Red Hawk is named after the Hawk and of course it ties back to Ace but we start the chap we don't start the chapter. We start this crazy moment of Luffy using Red Rock by him dodging the same attack he was one-shotted by Kaido. Don't forget, Kaido one-shot him with a Thunder Bagua. It wasn't a Thunder Bagua, but pretty much Kaido was using the same weapon. And it was devastating. Yo. I'm telling you guys right now, the fact that Kaido's weapon was able to one-shot uh, a Gear Fourth Luffy. And in this chapter, he's, his one swing pretty much caused an earthquake downstairs, to be honest, guys. The underlings were like so completely shocked. And to have a moment of Luffy dodging this attack, going to his Gear Third, and going red rock i'm telling you guys right now this is pretty much gear third red hawk in a sense and seeing ace in this chapter we all know the red hawk ties to ace having the red rock ties to ace in a sense we know ace is super heavily involved when it comes to wano and we've had that built up pre time skip time skip guys i'm telling you guys right now uh big mom is in complete shock that kaido got his teeth rocked no pun intended Luffy saying he's gonna become the pirate king because that's what they're antagonizing about Luffy about. Like, say what you, what you want. What do you want to come again, Brad? Like they kept on antagonizing Luffy. Don't do that, guys. He's a future pirate king. Monkey D. Luffy showed why he's the goat. And I'm telling you guys, Kaido's pretty much face on the ground. He looked embarrassed. Like uh, I, I'm telling you, guys, I've never seen Kaido look that pity, pitiful. Like the Red Scab was doing damage to Kaido was cool and all, but Luffy when he just rocked Kaido. I want to see the reaction of Kid, uh, Law, Zoro, and Kid. Like they're probably thinking, "Whoa, this guy is different." Speaking of Law, Kid, Killer, and Zoro, one of the greatest panels I've ever seen, narrated by Yamato, speaking for Kozuki Odin, and talking about the new generation, this new era of pirates that are going to come in the future in twenty years and come to the new world. Seeing this panel of Eustace Kid and Eustace. I'll be honest with you, Eustace Kid, excuse my language, he was talking his shit. He was pretty much telling them, like, are you guys going to watch me fight? I love the confidence from Eustace Kid. I hope that he shows something that is 
those that will shock us like luffy just showed us right now with red rock because i know luffy has way more stuff to show like red rock is just a glimpse of what luffy's about to show so please kid just show us one thing on the level of red red rock because i'm a huge kid fan like he's my top five favorite character and i'm if he doesn't really show me anything in this battle i, I will be disappointed and he definitely uh will take an l from my like, i don't really give l's like that but he'll give an l for me uh i definitely thought it was cool seeing killer there beside kid as vice captain zoro with beside luffy his vice captain and law of course no beffo beside him but seeing law there law looked the most badass on that boulder i have to admit law it was looking super super cool guys uh and i, I thought it was crazy how a situation arises of pretty much big mom and kaido from the old generation from the rocks uh two yonkos and the worst generation five members of the worst generation uh and they all look extremely powerful and people are trying to like make jokes about zoro and killer like zoro and killer shouldn't be there no 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 zoro and killer should be there i'm saying this right now there's a reason why they're the only vice captains in the worst generation they are extremely powerful uh pre time skip they had a bounty of killer had a 160 million barrier bounty uh, zoro had a 120 uh post time skip the bounty of course have risen but I'm telling you right now, not even about bounties, Killer and Zoro are powerful characters. Like, we've only seen Killer fight post time skip once, and that was against Zoro, and he lost to Zoro, yes, but Killer definitely was nerfed, and Zoro really didn't go all out. So, I'm telling you this right now, Killer and Zoro are more powerful than what people are thinking, and they're gonna show out their true abilities in this battle. They're gonna help out their captains. People are definitely sleeping. Uh, I'm just excited. I think Law's gonna do some crazy stuff when it comes to like the immortal surgery definitely being built up by Duffel Mango. Law's fruit ability, there's way more things to expand on. He showed us Gamma Knife and Dressrosa. I want to see what he shows us in this Kata battle. He has to show us something new. Uh, and of course, I think Luffy and Kid will definitely show out the most. Like, they will, they are leading the worst duration, in my opinion. Of course, Blackbeard is number one. But speaking of, not speaking of Blackbeard, I'm talking about characters like the Supernova Speed Time Skip. Luffy and Kid gotta go crazy. And this moment gave me complete chills. Luffy pretty much walking by Kaido and Big Mom. And you're probably thinking, just Luffy walking by Kaido and Big Mom. How is this a big moment, Mac? I'm telling you guys right now, like, they're talking down on him. They're antagonizing him. Uh, Kaido's like, you know what this guy said about me? And then Big Mom's like, yeah, he said the exact same thing. Like, they're just talking trash in front of him. And he just marches up, crosses them and like pretty much ignores them uh i like that that's pretty much goat that's pirate king energy i'm telling you this right now he did not show them any acknowledgement i thought that was super cool it kind of was like the old era facing the new era and of course these guys are pretty much looking down on the new era like big mom was talking about how i, I want to get all these like all their heads served on a platter like she was excited about destroying these first generation members uh i thought it was cool that zoro was also watching when luffy walked by kaido and big mom because zoro always watches he never ever reacts until it's like there's a time to react i love how zoro always waits and sees no zoro knows luffy so well he knows luffy is doing something for a certain reason and he has so so much belief in his captain i respect that and then kind of kind of ask luffy angrily again like what what'd you say you're gonna become and pretty much like kato's getting pissed off and luffy just walking by him and not acknowledging him like big mom and him were like huh like who does this guy think he is and he pretty much you know what luffy thinks he is he's going to become the pirate king epic moment this is the most epic moment i've seen since the three admirals when luffy faced the three admirals in my opinion this is the most epic moment i might put this in my favorite moment in, in the entire series one piece i might but i gotta see the animated first now going to the beginning of the chapter i thought that was very very cool that queen had some sort of like cyborg neck thing when it comes because i'll be honest here queen is has a cool ability like he's an ancient zoan uh of course that dinosaur he is is a very very legendary dinosaur we've seen in all the movies jurassic park all those movies like queen's fruit ability is definitely like a, a cool fruit ability but the fact that he was able to enhance his fruit ability with his cyborg science like judge vince smoke stuff he was doing i thought that was very very cool uh i definitely think that he was shocked that marco was blocking all their attacks like pretty much saying is this guy invincible i don't know where he got like he doesn't know that marco the phoenix like pretty much can regenerate like you gotta understand marco is a goat in the new world uh then seeing king and queen pretty much fly king, queen with his head and his long neck and then he of course came flying there just to stop marco from bringing zoro to the roof and marco blocks them this is a huge w marco blocking both king and queen like this is the vice captain and the second in command second division uh second top young commander these guys are incredibly powerful do i gotta say queen's bounty again is around 13 billion 1.3 billion i'm telling you this right now these guys are legit and marco blocks them like they're nothing very very cool stuff and he talks about the whole new generation i thought that was crazy marco definitely gets a huge w 
King, I don't know what's going on with King, but Marco definitely gets a huge W. And I personally feel like this chapter was made so beautiful with the stuff with Ace and Yamato. Ace telling Yamato what Luffy said to him and Sabo. And I've always thought that what he said was he's going to become Pirate King and they laughed. Because they always blanked that out. But now that Yamato is crying, hearing Luffy, like Ace said what Luffy said. And saying that a great man also said this. And she's talking about Roger, of course. I'm not too sure if he did say I'm going to become Pirate King. I think he said something else that is going to be revealed, I believe, maybe at the end of Wano. And this is going to be a crazy reveal that Roger and him said the exact same thing. Because Roger has huge ties to this arc because of the Kozuki Oden flashback and Kazuki, Kazuki Oden's logbook that keeps, keeps on getting mentioned in the last two chapters. I uh, definitely feel like that's very, very interesting. Uh, and Ace saying that he wants to drink with this great guy, that's his father, Roger. He doesn't know it. Like, that definitely uh, made me think, damn. Like, it was a bra moment. Like, damn, that's your, that's your pops, bro and Yamato saying that like pretty much like Luffy is just like this guy and Ace pretty much it's crazy how the person that Ace, Ace hates the most Roger is so much like the person that Ace loves the most Luffy it's definitely uh, a very very poetic thing right here uh, of course Ace loved Luffy and Sabo the most but Sabo was dead to Ace's eyes like Ace never knew Sabo was alive so the person he loved the most that was alive was Luffy so definitely want to say very very interesting stuff and I thought that was very cool that Luffy pretty much seeing these two Yonkos in front of him seeing his allies and Kid Law, of course, his vice captain is Zoro, and Killer, of course, vice captain the kid. He just ignores everything that's going on. Like, he peeps it, and then he goes on to talk to Kinemon. Like, are you okay, Kinemon? And he's like, pretty much, of course, they had that strong bond. They've been together since Punk Hazard. Uh, it was a very, very strong moment for me. Luffy just had a lot of strong moments in this chapter. Uh, the Red Scabbers are completely decimated just by one man facing Kaido. This is how strong Kaido is. You gotta respect Kaido here. He took out all these guys who are not weaklings. Like, half of these Red Scabbers are like top on commander level characters and they all got decimated. You have to respect them. They were using Ryu. Like these guys definitely really showed out. I was impressed. Like they took out Jack, his top young commander uh, in Sulong form in Arashi Nakamushi. They definitely were ex ex incredible powerful using Odin techniques. Kaido decimated them. Uh, I think it was cool of Law to pretty much bring them all the way downstairs. Like people are always saying Law, why didn't Law just transform everybody who needed to go to the roof in like one second? Like Law has a safe stamina, guys. And Law definitely had other intentions with the whole opponent. There's a lot of reasons why Law didn't do that. I'm telling you guys right now. But it was cool that Law did do that in the right time. And the beginning of the chapter was an epic beginning of the chapter we see shishimushi that luffy calls him or sicilian i don't know what you want to call him the, the three musketeers pretty much have cleared the way for luffy and luffy mentioning rise luffy just knows that the thing the little things to say to touch people like I'm, and i'm not speaking in a weird way like to actually touch people's hearts because that was a crazy moment. They sacrificed their lives for to not snitch out Raizo. Luffy mentions it and pretty much says, I, I acknowledge your greatness. Like, that's a greatness from the Minx. Uh, I thought it was very, very cool. Now, it definitely makes me think, if Sicilian is alive, the Three Musketeers are up and alive, where is... You guys know who I'm about to say. Where is Jack, yo? Because Jack is an ancient zone. You know they can regenerate. And Jack has an, like a lot of things to showcase. His hybrid form. Jack might be coming back. Like We see all the Flying Six having their fights. Jack might get a fight himself. Who is he going to fight? Very, very crazy stuff, guys. I'm telling you guys right now. The hype is real. And the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to chapter... 1000 which is an amazing chapter yamamoto yamamoto like i'm telling you guys right now he gives momonosuke the journal the kozuki odin logbook and i think this is gonna be very very important when it comes to the, the conclusion of wano kozuki momonosuke has the same fruit ability as kaido pretty much with that small fruit ability that mythical zone that dragon type like that's why kinemon was so shocked and momonosuke would showcased it uh i definitely feel like it's gonna be a very very interesting plot line uh odin of course predicted and the roger pirates predicted that in 20 years young powerful pirates will come to the new world and as uh, yamato is narrating this we see luffy i mean we see kid and law there's so many uh story elements showing that kid law and luffy are going to be the top dogs of the future like they're going to be the top pirates in a sense and they're gonna have stories of them working together kind of how like big mom and kaido have stories of them working together in the past like you're gonna have stories of luffy kid and law talking about how we work together to take out kaido and big mom it's gonna be an epic future i can't wait to the end of the story one piece because a lot of hype things are gonna be like when we look back at the story one piece is a story where we when we're st <laughs> catching up and like i'll be honest here 24 2015 like those time was in my opinion was the peak theory time when it comes to the one piece community now it's like we're at the point where like we're getting so many answers that we're looking back on the series that's how hype it is guys such an amazing series chapter 1000 i would give you a round of applause if i could but tell tell me your guys thoughts down in the comment section down below i want to hear all you guys opinions like and share if you enjoy like and share only if you enjoy subscribe for more one piece content i'm the legend mac and i'm
quand